Here, this will get rid of your fever. I'm not coming back until you get better. My husband poured cold water on me. My fever was so high that I had difficulty getting up. We had been married for five years. When did he turn into such a jerk? I asked the wrong person for help. Even as my consciousness faded, my anger toward him welled up. It was then someone came to my rescue. When my husband returned home, he was so stunned to see the person that he lost his voice. I looked at his face and laughed at him so hard. Suck it up, you deserved it. My name is Cassidy, 33 years old. I'm a homemaker. I met my husband Alex when we were at university. He was one of my classmates in the same circle of friends. He was a good natured guy who was popular amongst all students. If someone was in trouble, he reached out to them before anyone else. He helped me many times as a friend too. It was when I had a drink with friends in my senior year. I found out that the then boyfriend I had been with since freshman year was cheating on me and just broke up with him on that day. The other girl was also in the same circle, and I didn't want to make it a public affair. I was careful not to let people around me know, but Alex noticed that I wasn't in good spirits. Hey, what's wrong? Tears welled up involuntarily when he asked me. I had been holding back my emotions, not being able to tell anyone. He was stunned to see my crying and took me out of the bar. When I told him what had happened, he comforted me until I could gather myself. I felt a little lighter after telling him. When we went back inside, our friends teased us, which he lightly handled. From then on, he contacted me frequently. He invited me to parties and hangouts. As I hung out with him, I gradually felt better. At the same time, I realized that I had fallen for him. Until then, he was always the one to ask me out, so I gathered my courage and started to ask him out. On the day of our graduation, we became official. I was at the peak of my happiness then. We both got jobs near the university. He worked in sales and I in administration. Although our jobs were different, we shared the same problems as newbies. We often met up after work and on weekends to encourage each other. There were times when things didn't go well at work, but he helped me get through it. He always knew what I wanted to hear. It was really comforting to spend time with him. He didn't change over the years of our relationship. Although we lived separately close to each other, we were almost living together, going back and forth to each other's places. We continued our relationship like that. And before we knew it, six years had passed. When we hung out with our university friends, they often asked us when we were getting married. Alex always handled the question with silly jokes. As the days went on, our sixth anniversary arrived. Hey, when are we getting married? I asked him directly. He answered after a short pause. My mom is a bit crazy and overprotective. If I told her I was getting married, I worry what she would say. She might say something terrible to you. I do want to be with you forever though. In all the years we had been together, I had never met his parents. When he was on the phone with his mom, Kelly, I normally kept quiet. My mom is such a pain in the neck. He always complained and didn't dare to tell her about us. What do you think about marriage? Then he replied he wanted as well. I would do my best to work things out with your mom. I was anxious, of course, but I held his hand and pushed him. The following week, we went to tell his mom about our engagement. His parents divorced when he was in middle school. I had braced myself before meeting her, 
but it turned out to be a waste. I'm looking forward to the wedding. You will look like a princess in a dress. Unlike the person Alex has described, Kelly treated me nicely. He seemed surprised at the different reaction from what he had imagined. I felt a sense of relief. Kelly spoke excitedly about the wedding the whole time, and our first meeting ended harmoniously. If I knew it was going to be like this, I should have married you sooner. Alex laughed on the way home. We decided to have the wedding on my birthday and moved in together first. We had known each other for a long time and had been semi cohabiting, but it still felt very new. I rushed home to cook dinner after work. Alex always finished everything I cooked for him. Whenever I was reminded that we were married, I felt tremendous happiness. Kelly brought a lot of food without notice and meddled in the wedding planning. She was a bit nosy, but we were getting along well. On the day of the wedding, Alex and I headed to the wedding venue after registering early in the morning. We were congratulated by friends and family, including our university friends. Kelly cried from happiness many times from the beginning till the end. The day after the wedding, we went on our honeymoon to Hawaii. Have a great time! She sent us off with a big smile. I bought lots of gifts for her on the trip. Alex had warned me about her, but I thought we were getting on alright. I felt as close as ever to Alex, and my life seems to be going perfectly. However, after returning from the trip, Kelly started acting differently. I got you some gift, Kelly. I handed her a lot of souvenirs. Hmm, this must be from Alex, and you picked this one. She sorted them out. I asked her how she knew. Because you have no clue what I like. I've realized that you have no sense of style since you were preparing for the wedding. I was stunned by her bold comment. By the way, when are you going to quit your job? She suddenly changed the subject. Um, I'm not planning to. My voice faltered. Honeymoon is over now. You must focus on having a baby, you understand? You gotta do what you're expected to, right, Alex? He looked down without saying anything. It had been six years since I started working. I was entrusted with more work and came to appreciate it more. Even after marriage and having children, I was planning to keep my job. I couldn't understand why I had to quit. Why didn't Alex say anything? Let me think about it. You are 28, aren't you? You don't have much time to think about it. She almost scolded me. I left her house without coming to a conclusion in the end. Hey, how can you didn't help me out? I asked Alex on the way home. Once she starts, she won't listen to me anyway. You just have to give up. Huh, why should I give up? He didn't answer me, but just furrowed his eyebrows. It was hard to believe that we were joyful from our honeymoon trip just a few hours ago. We returned home in heavy silence. Since then, Kelly started calling me every day. Cassidy, have you given your resignation yet? There is a good OBGYN, and I want you to see him as soon as possible. I almost became neurotic every time I spoke to her. I finally had enough and decided to resign from my job after telling my boss what had been going on. I cried in frustration on my last day. I thought it was going to satisfy Kelly, but it didn't at all. Come on, I'm going to teach you every one of the chores. She came over every day. She instructed me in detail about the housework I had been doing half-heartedly. I was asked if I was pregnant every day. There was usually a knock at the door within an hour after Alex left for work. The mere hour before she showed up was the only time I had for myself. After Alex returned home, 
the three of us had dinner together, and then she finally left. Such was my life. One night after Kelly left, hey Hong, I don't want your mom to come over every day. Can you tell her? I pleaded with Alex. You cook better now, thanks to my mom. He steered the conversation away every time. Stress built up day by day, and I started to lose weight. There was no way I could have conceived in such a state. After three years like that, I reached my limit. A child is a godsend. It's not something that's given just because you want it. Stop coming here every day. I blew up on Kelly before I knew it. Once I had let it out, I came back to myself and regretted it right away. I saw her face turned bright red. I'm doing everything for you guys. How dare you be so rude? She yelled at me. I didn't know what to do, but I decided to say what I wanted to say at that point. I'm telling you, it's a nuisance. There's no need for you to come here every day. As we argued back and forth for a while, I noticed that Alex was standing there. Honey, stop talking to her like that. He only scolded me. She said a lot of things to me too. So why are you only mad at me? Why? Why don't you get it? I was so hurt that I ran into the bedroom and wailed nonstop. I heard Kelly leave, and Alex came into the room. Are you still crying? You should be sorry for what you did. He mumbled. Why do I have to be sorry? I've worked so hard and endured so much. I warned you before we got married. You knew what you were getting into. You said you would make it work. Don't be rude to my mom anymore. He left cold air behind. I couldn't stop crying even hours later. After that day, Kelly stopped coming. She called me once in a while, but I never answered. If she needed something from me, she spoke through Alex. He occasionally went to see her without me. I continued to have a cold war with her, and my marriage became loveless. We neither argue nor be amicable. We only had the bare minimum of conversation. There were days when he became hostile toward me. My mom often says that you are a failure. I was told out of the blue. He came home later and later every day, and sometimes he didn't even bother to come back. It continued for a while, and I started to think about getting a divorce. There was no trace of the sweet man I used to know. I sometimes wondered how we could go back to our former selves. Then one day, I felt unwell. I took some cold medicine and did my chores, but I still wasn't better by the evening. I was going to take a little break on the sofa, but I ended up falling asleep. Then I was woken by Alex, who came home from work. How come there's no dinner? I had been out for quite a while. My body felt hot, and I was quite feverish. I apologized and tried to get up, but I wobbled back down. Alex only looked at me coldly without any concern. I think I have a high fever. Can't you take me to the doctor? I asked him in a daze. Here, let this cool your fever. I'm not coming back until you are better. He poured cold water on me from a bowl. I'm going out for a drink if there is no dinner. He left me behind. I was pretty furious, but I couldn't say anything back and just lay there in dampness. Sometime later, when the dawn broke, Alex came back reeking of alcohol. I'm back. Have you gotten better? I heard his cheerful voice coming from the hallway. The moment he entered the living room, Kelly slapped him across his face. He sobered up immediately and froze there. Where have you been? Speak up! What are you doing here? He seems to be confused and freaked out at the same time, which made me laugh. I asked her over. You left me with a high fever, so she helped me. 
He was speechless. A few minutes after he left, my phone rang. I assumed it was him calling to apologize. I couldn't get up, so I crawled on the floor to grab my phone. When I answered it, I was surprised to hear Kelly's voice. Kelly, please help me. I squeezed my voice out. Within 10 minutes, she was at my side and took me to the emergency. I'm sorry to bother you. When I apologized to her, she replied, You're not feeling well, don't worry. I was immediately put on an IV drip and felt a little better afterward. Since I had no other symptoms, the doctor let me go. On the way home, Kelly bought a lot of electrolyte drinks for me. You've been so kind. I thanked her for her help. It's normal, we are family. When we arrived home, I told her about the rough patch Alex and I were going through. She was disgusted and also disappointed by his action. Alex, you owe her an apology. She scolded him, but he tried to excuse himself. She's been a drama queen. It's just a fever. She's overreacting. He sobbed like a little kid. Kelly sighed loudly. You were quite young, but don't you remember? It's just like when I decided to divorce your father. You must have taken the same bad traits from him. Cassidy, you want a divorce, don't you? Yes, I can't be with him anymore. I answered honestly. Are you serious? You don't even work. You can't live without me. He countered with a ridiculous argument. What are you talking about? I just have to get a job again. I'm so sorry. Please reconsider. He finally apologized. It's too late. Cassidy, you can stay with me for a while. Kelly yelled at him, and we left the house, leaving him behind. On the way to her house, we spoke about our past. She told me that there was a reason why she was so hard on me. She was once a Korean woman in the early years of her marriage. When her ex-husband found out that she earned more than him, he quit his job one day. She worked until just before Alex was born, but he did nothing to help her and kept his carefree way. She continued to work hard, took care of the house, and raised Alex. One day, after Alex left for school, she collapsed at home. Her ex-husband, just like Alex, didn't care and went out. When Alex, who was still in middle school, came home, he called an ambulance and saved her. When they were going through a divorce, her ex-husband criticized her for being a workaholic and didn't care about her family. Since then, she believed that kids were always on the mother's side and that being a perfect homemaker was more important than working. I'm sorry, I forced my opinions on you. She also mentioned that Alex had asked her to come over every day. Cassidy quit her job, so come and teach her to be a good wife. She wants your help too. I never said anything like that. Why did he come up with such a lie? After Kelly and I got into a cold war, he apparently told her that I was bad-mouthing her. He also said that she was doing the same to me. In truth, she never said anything. I didn't understand the meaning of his behavior. Maybe he enjoyed watching us bicker. The next day, I visited an attorney to fight for divorce. Alex kept pleading. Honey, mom, I'm really sorry. Would you please reconsider? He begged us in tears. No way. We replied in unison. I told all of my friends from the university about what had happened. They were disgusted and said they would keep their distance from him. One of them works at the same company as him, so rumors were spread there. Kelly is also keeping her distance from him and doesn't contact him anymore. He has lost the trust of his family, friends, and colleagues all at once and must be in despair. 
I hope he reflects on what he did. I stayed with Kelly until I got a new job and found a new place to live. There is a blank period of five years, but I'm grateful to find a job in the same field as before. I still keep in touch with Kelly. We had a falling out once, but now we are like a real mother and daughter. She was as happy as if she were my own mother when I got the job. I hope to keep this relationship with her for a long time.